Quen Image Edit is here and it's a good one. You can take any image, use text to change it however you like, and it actually works. See, there's one with a to-do list, a version painting, one singing, all from that single original image. Over in Comfy UI, I haven't noticed a template in there yet. I'm sure there'll be one in a couple of days, but it's really easy to update the text to image workflow, especially if you're using my one from last week where we tested the power of Quen image to create a superposition of a cat and a rodent. However, you can make this yourself at home now, or if you're able to help support the channel, then you'll get all the various workflows ready-made whilst enabling me to keep making even more workflows and tutorial videos for everyone. The choice is yours and a massive thank you to all those who can help. For Quen Image Edit, the main thing is this new node, Text Encode Quen Image Edit, which has three inputs, clip as usual, but also the VAE and image input. I'll be using CFG1, so the negative prompt is just empty and unused. For the image, you can use whatever loaders you fancy, and here I'm just using native Comfy UI nodes, as you can see from the little fox icon. I'm scaling the image here, but the real size is controlled by the latent. Connecting the Get Image Size node to the empty latent will maintain the image proportions, but you can use a different width and height if you like. I've also added a high-res fix for giggles and a quick bypass to turn it off if needed. So very simple there, same as the normal one, but you just add an upscale latent by. There you go, scale by 1.25, makes it a bit bigger. And of course the denoise is lower on this, 0.25, maybe up to about 0 0.5, 0 0.6, but give it a go and see what you prefer. Totally optional, but you could also use the Light X to V Lightning LoRa as well. For these examples, I'm using the four step one, but they do have other options available as well. With the four step LoRa, that means on a 3090, the image generations take just 13 seconds, which is pretty nice. Certainly a lot faster than one minute and 30 seconds for the previous ones without it, but then a bit difficult if you want to do the superposition stuff. Anyway, as for VRAM usage, the FP8 model seems happy with around 22 gig. So for those of you with less VRAM, there are various GGUF files also available. I haven't seen any from City96 just yet, but Quantstack has a bunch already. As for prompting, there's a whole bunch of examples I've got here from Quen that I've just condensed down into a note and yes, it can do a lot. Now, rather than read all those out, let's dive into looking at some pictures. One thing I've found is that you don't need to be quite as harsh as with context, but sometimes it really does benefit from defining boundaries and saying which things don't change. Like I've got here, all else remains calm and unchanged. And remember, this is the original image. Not too shabby, eh? Look, unicorns make cheese. It's changed the sign. And it's changed the rodent into a happy unicorn. That's not bad at all. We've also got the high-res fix version there. A little bit more detail on the sign, sort of more crumply and stuff. Up to you whether you like the higher resolution or not, of course. All right, let's try some more things. Got a new input. And this time I have a really basic prompt. Rotate the central character 45 degrees. Now remember, as we've got the Lightning LoRa in there, we've got just four steps, CFG1, this is DPM++2 MSDE with the simple scheduler. And whoa, look at that, it's turn the character. That is a really nice turn. Okay, high res fix, little bit more detail, obviously slightly higher resolution. Zoom out a bit and see them both there, but yes, that is a very nice rotation. Okay, let's try some more things. A different input image. This time I've got my little guy there and another very simple prompt. Transform the image into a photorealistic style. And there he is, a bit more photorealistic. That is, that is very good indeed. Of course, the high-res fix has a little bit more detail on the cracked ground at the bottom there. So personally, I do quite like the high-res fix, but wow, that image editing. Okay, let's try it the other way around. So I've got a photo this time, woman with a uh, very nice hat there. And then rather than cartoon to photograph here, I've got transform the image into a vintage cartoon style with bold colors and detailed features. And I think you'll agree the result is, 
really very good indeed. Look at that. That's really simple prompt. And I've got that. And then we go got the high res fixed version as well. Little bit of an open mouth. It always does that, doesn't it? A bit annoying, but yeah, that's very good. OK, let's try some image editing. We've got this rather complicated image going in along with a transformational prompt. So here I've got change the throne into an old all wood chair with turquoise paint peeling off it and change the flowers into piles of cheese and add a small metal sign in the background which reads royal cheese in a bold gothic font. Now I found if you're doing multiple changes like that it's best to keep putting the word and in so that it knows it has to make multiple changes. If you put a full stop and break it into sentences, sometimes it doesn't do all the things. As for the result, yeah, that's that's nailed it. We've got the piles of cheese, the throne has changed into a wooden chair with peeling turquoise paint, and there we've got the royal cheese sign. A quick look at the high-res fix. Again, a bit more detail, but we've still got the cheese and the sign. Wow, that's very good indeed. OK, let's try some more edits. This time I've got this guy with a blank background. And for the prompt, I'm saying I want a painting of a rodent on the wall behind him. The rodent is wearing a floppy hat and is in a graffiti art style. So I'm trying to mix sort of two different styles together. Thus, I'm saying the rest of the image remains loyally unchanged, especially the original central figure, which anchors the scene. And once again, Quen image edit delivers. Look at that. I mean, it's not necessarily the graffiti art style I was going for. It's got some spray paint in the background, but whoa, as far as actually doing what I said, yeah, that's that's pretty good. That is good. Even more edits? Sure, why not? So I've got this image going in and another really simple prompt. The rodent is wearing a tuxedo and check that out. He's wearing a tuxedo. Such a simple prompt. And yeah, it's done exactly what I said. Let's have a look at the high res image. A little bit more detail on the fur, I think. But yeah, but nice tuxedo, dude. The same image again then, but a slightly more complicated prompt. This time I'm saying the rodent is wearing a floppy hat and the text on the TV reads aliens exist in a more futuristic font, but also with an alien face just visible peering out from inside the television static behind the text. Once again, Quen image delivers. That's that's just really good. Little alien face there, got some TV static. It's changed the font. So we'll look at the high res fix as well. A little bit more of a face there, but yeah, that is very impressive. So what are you going to Quen edit? Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way. 